Hey guys, and welcome to Reverse Crawl. So Reverse Crawl is an interesting game because you play as kind of the evil undead force. So there is other games that have done this. Um, the two that come to mind are Dungeon Keeper and Overlord. Um, but this game does it different because it's an RPG, which is really interesting. Um, it's also made by one of my favorite developers. Before this, I only think he made Flash games. Um, but, but yeah, I love him. I love his games. I absolutely adore the guy. His name is Nerduk or Nerduk. I always thought it was Nerduk, but I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, guys, let's hop to the game and we'll kind of explain as we go along. I did do the first chapter just to kind of get an idea of how it worked and do a sound check. But let's just hop right into the game. Once upon a time, there was a great king who ruled wisely over the southern kingdom. The king had a daughter who he very loved very much. But he did not approve of her hobby, necromancy. Everything changed with the Red Queen invaded, marching her army in from the north. The king's army was easily defeated, and the king was killed in his own castle. The princess retrieved the king's soul and resurrected him as the Revenant King. Together they stood against the Red Queen and began their rolling rampage of revenge. Really good use of alliteration there. So let us start the first chapter. Chapter 1, Rebirth. The King Returns as a Revenant. Welcome back, Dad. My Revenant ritual was a success. Huh? Revenant ritual? Yep, you were hacked into pieces. I brought you back. You mean I was killed? Yeah, your army was really lousy and everybody got slaughtered except me. Crap, so the invaders managed to defeat us? They completely took it over the castle. Some militia are on their way here. You have to rely on my necromancy skills and undead minions for now. Your necromancy skills are kind of creepy, actually. Get ready. You can choose which minion group you want to spawn to get us out of here. If you don't like the choices, you can reroll a selection for a free up to three times. So this is what makes this game so interesting. Is that you get to choose which minions you throw into battle. So we know what the first group is, and we also know that there's three groups left after this one. We get a total of three minion groups. And we can re-roll them. This is actually a pretty good group. So, you always get the choice of the Rev the King. So, enter the battle yourself. The Prince by your side. Revenant King does 0% more damage to heroes and militia. I've never fielded the Revenant King. And I don't know if it kind of ends if their king dies. So, I haven't used them. We will definitely try it. So, we have Flesh and Bones. Summons two zombies, one skeleton archer, and two skeleton warriors. Zombies have 50% resistance to magic. Skeleton chargers have pierce and cannot be dodged. So minions also will either have a debuff or a kind of or a buff. This one has cursed. The first minion to be killed in this group will turn as a skeleton warrior. <coughs> Excuse me. So this group is weak versus clerics, but good for small groups of one to three, which this is. So the wraiths you summon two wraiths, undead warriors that deal 50% of their melee damage to all adjacent enemies. Immune to poison, but minions in this group deal 10% less damage because they're weak. So rays are generally good versus large groups or groups that poison and also weak against clerics. Zombies are similar like we saw here. We just get four zombies instead of two. They're still resistant to magic, but they deal 50% more damage but have 10% less health. So zombies are generally good versus ranged magic. We have skeleton archers. So you get three skeleton archers, shoots pierce shots from afar, high initiative, but cannot move. Cannot be dodged. So, and then means this group had 2% chance of dodge and 2% chance of critical hits. So, skeleton archers are really good, especially against people who don't move. But, I like having fleshy bones because although you only get one skeleton archer, you get to feel a total of five things rather than three. So I find fleshy bones is quite powerful. Click on the blue hex to move, you hex to attack and red hex to attack. Red yellow hex are adjacent to one or more minions, only minions can attack after moving. So range units take additional damage when attacked by melee units, they can shoot from any distance. Each minion attack gets 10% extra damage for each enemy flanking, so it doesn't have to be behind the target, it just has to be adjacent. So flanking is not really always the best turn, but all your minions have power strike command for risk your attack and guard command to defend. So I haven't really found the power strike that amazing but I guess if you need to do a little bit extra damage it could be good and guard is interesting it recovers health um, 
and then you get the counter attack melee attack or reduce damage on the missile so that's pretty interesting down here we get to see all the stats of our character and then you get to see kind of the stats of the enemies so and down here we'll talk about that because that's kind of like a spell it's, they call it i think the threat bar but So uh, our skeleton warrior is kind of taking a beating here. You can move through your units, like here we'll move through. So I'll flank X3. So he took damage, but he came back as a cursed minion. So we have a choice to attack here or attack up here. I'm actually gonna... Oh, sorry, I thought that was a zombie. Sometimes I'm not quite aware of how the outlining works. Because I thought that was outlining the skeleton warrior, but we still did fine. Okay, so we can use summons, um, or we can save until next time. I'm gonna save them just for now, but we're probably gonna summon a skeleton warrior. Yeah, we just feed the first group of manager. Here comes more of them. Keep it up. My mutants will at least one adjacent enemy are considered engaged. Engaged melee units have their movement reduced to one, limiting their movability. Engaged melee units cannot move at all and only attack adjacent targets. Okay, so we did get first move, so I'm gonna summon skeleton warrior. I just wanted to see um, if the enemy would have first kind of move. Skeletons are weaker. Zombies are a lot stronger. Skeletons are kind of weaklings. So I want to move up here. We do not want to attack the guy's guard if we can. So we wanted to make as much room for all our units to attack. We especially want our zombies to be able to attack because the zombies are our most powerful units. So. So the skeleton warrior is quite hurt. Or so yeah. So what we could do is we could actually defend. Do some healing. He died anyway, but And yeah, we won. Oh, that didn't actually end the round. I thought that was gonna end the round. Yeah, let's kill. Him. Who's that? That's the elite militia. They're much stronger than normal militia. Elite Militia have an armor. They take reduced damage to physical attacks. They can also counterattack for 25% damage if attacked immediately. So try using arrows or spells against them. So yeah, we want to use our skeleton archer or any of our spells to take out this elite militia. So I still like summoning skeletons. I find skeletons are quite quite good. Like because you get constant damage, that's gonna summon another one as well. So I'm gonna move up here. I can, ooh, that's gonna move it into the range of the elite militia. I'm just gonna heal it. So I want my skeletons to, or my zombies to be able to move up. Ooh, I thought that was actually gonna kill him. So, I actually got quite a few guys that are weak, but definitely wanna hit that elite militia. Um, oh, sh see, like, that's the thing I have trouble with, is knowing when. Like, how that all works half the time. It's, it can be quite hard to kind of figure out how each kind of tile works. Like, I just trouble trying to figure out which when I'm attacking which units. So, he did survive. Oh. Get ready, here comes the final group. We need to defeat them before we can get out of here. We're also getting XP for our abilities and, um,. How to say. Yeah, for abilities and killing enemies. So here I'm actually going to use quite a few abilities. Okay, so. So I killed that elite miss right away. I want to see if we can do it without losing a minion group, actually. I'm not sure if I will be able to, but. I'm guessing we're probably going to lose this group. I do want to shoot him. So finish off him. Let's actually just heal. Because, yeah, then we get the counter. Finish off him. Yeah, we'll actually probably get a kill on this. We lost our zombie, but... Exactly. You did it! That's the last of them! Oh, that's a tough fight. What's next? There's a lot more soldiers here. We can't kill them all. We have to escape from the castle and plan our next move. 
Good idea. We'll come back here when I'm stronger. So we did, I think we got out of the way Bolzak Peak so we didn't use um, any of our extra zombie groups. So we get a choice. We get Dark Healing, we can heal more, Magic Missiles, or improve Skeleton Warriors. You saw how much I used my Skeleton Warriors. <laughs> so, I'm a big fan of that. Red Queen. Ah, it seems a previous king returned with the Revenant Ritual. How interesting. Begin our search for the Guardian immediately. Let's keep an eye on the king. Yes, my queen. I have summoned the heroes in the realm, and I will begin the hunt. So, guys, we actually have a choice of what we're going to do in the next mission. We also have some upgrades to choose from. But I'm going to get into those in the next episode. So, thanks, guys, for coming out for Reverse Crawl. And we're back in the next episode for more. Thanks, guys. Later.